Hey everyone, I hope you're doing all right. Uh, in today's video, I wanted to talk about two cello sounds that I came up with in the Helix. I'm using the HX Stomp, so I'm limited to six blocks, uh, but this is gonna work with any Helix device. It's a pretty simple patch, and you just gotta know how to tweak some settings to get uh, a, a convincing sound here. Uh, so first off, I'm playing a very normal electric violin. This is a five string. It's got, it's tuned E, A, D, G, and then finally a C in the normal octave range of a violin or viola. And so we're going to be using some pitch shifting options in the Helix to get it down there. We're going to be using an impulse response, which is free, by the way. You'll need to pick up that if you're going to copy this preset. And uh, the link to that is going to be in the description, so check out that. And if you're interested in more uh, violin presets, electric violin stuff, make sure you check out some of the other links in the description. This video is one of a set of four that I'm doing where I'm sharing a couple of different presets that I made. Everything's free. So hopefully if this video is helpful for you, you'll find the other ones helpful as well. Uh, so remember to check out those when we're done here. And we'll jump over to HX Edit and I'll show you the sounds now. So the first thing you always want to do when you're creating new presets, new sounds for yourself with the Line 6 Helix equipment is uh, set up the input impedance setting. Figure out the best one for your instrument. I play a Ned Steinberger and I go with 90K, but just trust your ears and go with what sounds the best. A lot of people are going to disagree and say that electric violins need to have a much higher input impedance setting, but this sounds good to me and this is what I go with. So uh, trust your ear and, and just figure out what sounds the best to you, I'd say. The next two blocks, uh, we're going to look at an EQ, a custom EQ curve that I came up with, and also a comp some compression settings. And what these are doing is cutting back on the sounds we don't need out of the instrument and kind of gluing everything together to create a very usable sound for the pitch shifting and the impulse response blocks to work with so that they can operate as best as possible. These are my EQ settings. Uh, the biggest one to note is that I have a low cut at 110 Hz. For me, one of the most annoying things with electric violins is this low kick drum range thump that happens every time you change bow strokes. If we apply this EQ curve, it's going to get rid of that a bit. And as well, I'm adding a high high cut to it, uh, so we're cutting it at 12.5 kilohertz, and this gets rid of extra sounds that aren't really useful to us. And then as well with some other stuff, I've cut a little bit of the lows, some of the mids here, quite a bit actually, 9 decibels, and then boosted a little bit of the highs. And then going on to the compression setting, uh, these are my settings, and this is something you're going to want to play with a little bit depending on the output volume of your instrument. The threshold setting is going to change a little bit. So um, I, go, I go with negative 18 decibels. This is probably a very middle of the road output volume, but if you have active pickups, if your pickups take a battery, then uh, you're probably going to want to set that a little bit higher. Ratio four to one, uh, attack settings at 85 milliseconds, release, mix. I set it at 85%. This is the same as my other presets, uh, the violin and viola ones from the other video, if you haven't checked that out yet. I keep the mix setting at 85%, and that just lets a little bit of the dry signal through so that we get a more natural sound overall. And then level is at negative 1.5 decibels, and I just I do this to try and keep a unity gain throughout all of the different blocks. Looking at the pitch block, I go with the simple pitch. Uh, interval, negative 12, that's 12 semitones, so we're going a full octave down. Sense is where you're going to mess with tuning a little bit, and uh, no reason to do that. Delay would be a weird thing to want to use when you're trying to create a natural acoustic tone. So keep that at minimum. Keep the shift level all the way up. Mix, I go with 75% because the actual sound of the pitch shifting block is a little bit unnatural. It'll change the attack of the bow and you'll hear some artifacts. And just letting a little bit of the dry tone through again helps keep it sounding a little bit more natural. Looking at the impulse response, uh, the first one's going to be using the viola impulse response. I haven't been able to find, to, my, to the best of my ability, I haven't, haven't been able to find a cello impulse response, but I thought that the viola one actually sounded pretty good when, again, you keep the mix low. So the first cello setting here, and we have some other ones that I'm going to show you, but the first cello setting is using the viola impulse response from the link in the description. I put the low cut on again. I don't think it actually adds anything. I, I think it's just my OCD talking. And then a high cut again at 8.5, and that's even lower than it was before in the EQ block mix at 60%, and then level, you're going to see a foot switch 3 option over here, and that's because when I engage foot switch 3 on this preset, 
we're getting a five decibel boost. So that's if you need to stick out a little bit in a band mix for a solo and you want to pop out so that the audience can hear you better. That's what foot switch three is going to do on all my presets. Foot switch three is always a boost. And then continuing just on into a normal volume block. If you don't use your device uh, with a volume, then no need to put that there, but I think it's really useful. And then finally the reverb, which I have triggered uh, to bypass with foot switch one, by the way, pitch is bypassed with foot switch two. If you need to start playing higher or, um, if you just want a, a normal, uh, electric violin sound at any given moment with the impulse response of the viola, obviously. But if you just want a normal electric violin tone without pitch shifting down, uh, you can trigger that off or on with foot switch two and then reverb is foot switch one. I'm going to play through it a little bit now on just a simple G major scale. And you're going to hear how each of these blocks affects the sound. Let's just start with the totally dry signal of the violin. Add in the EQ. The compressor. Here's the pitch shifting block. One thing I have to say is when you start playing chords uh, with this block on, sometimes they can get a little uh, glitchy. So it has a hard time tracking more than one note. All right, so major thirds are better than minor thirds. Tritone sounds pretty good, actually. So does a fifth. But not a minor third. Don't do that. No minor thirds. And then uh, eventually add in the impulse response, and this is where we're going to get some more natural sounding sounds from. And finally, the reverb. One of the big reasons that I chose the HX Stomp and not one of the full Helix units is that I still want to use some of my other external effects with it. So uh, myself, when I would play out, I would actually put in uh, an effects loop block here at the last chain so that I can use my outboard reverb and delay. Additionally, I always keep the Electro Harmonics Pitchfork pedal on my board. It's a pitch shifting effect that I think works a lot better than the stuff in Helix. So let's AB them. Right now I have just about the same settings you could say set up on the pitchfork as I do in Helix. Let's play with the pitchfork and we'll switch back and forth. And then Helix. I don't know if you caught it, but when I changed strings, you could hear a little bit of, of, of that glitchiness. And I think it's because I had my last string ringing over and then I started playing the next string. So there was some dissonance there with the clashing intervals. Additionally, the pitchfork sounds great when you're playing chords, it tracks much better. much better than the one in Helix. <laughs> anyway, so if you're planning on using a cello preset, I definitely advise getting an external uh, pitch shifting pedal like the Pitchfork. The Pog is also a great one by Electro Harmonic. Some people are using the Digitech Drop, it has a different sound to it. I like the Pitchfork because it tracks very well. And uh, uh, let's, let's go on and I'm going to show you the second cello setting. Basically the only difference here is that I'm using a violin impulse response from that package instead of the viola. So just a little bit of a sound, different sound, and the mix is set lower. Uh, but let's start from the beginning again, input impedance. EQ is the same as before, don't bother changing it. In fact, uh, if you copy the first setting already, just hit copy and paste and all we're going to change is the, the impulse response really. There's the compression, pitch shifting block, all the same settings. Impulse response, I already showed you that. Mix is at 25% with the new impulse response. And I changed the low cut a little bit too, I think. Uh, reverb's the same. So this is what this 
uh, this second cello setting sounds like. It's a little bit less of what a cello sounds like, and I think more, uh, more of the electric violin tone really passes through, but then again we have some high-end manipulation going on with the impulse response. <laughs> And if we use the pitchfork instead, in a second, I'm going to play these settings for you back to back, so you can decide which of the two you like better. Uh, but you might have the question lingering in your mind, like why settle and just go with a viola impulse response? And I think the name of the game here was just keeping it free, so that people can experiment without dropping money into something extra. Like I said, it's always better if you have an external pitch shifting device like the Pitchfork or something else. It's just going to track better. It's going to sound better, I think. Uh, so if you have the money for it and you decide it's worth it, I'd say pick up something like the Pitchfork to really help out with the cello sound. And additionally, I couldn't find any cello presets online, any cello impulse responses, I should say, online. But uh, if you want to drop some money, I know 3 Sigma Audio has a couple that you can buy. They're like 15 bucks, I think, for the pack. And that's obviously going to sound better than the viola stuff. But the name of the game was just keeping it free for you so you can decide if it's worth it or not. So let's play these back to back and I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this. When I make these videos, I always have people uh, that would prefer just a regular .hlx file download and people have reached out and said, you know, I'd perfectly be willing to pay for this to support you in return for the download. So I set up a PayPal donation link down below. Just a donation of any amount gets you uh, instant access to all of my presets. It's, uh, bas it's basically a Google Drive folder that I keep updated whenever I put a new sound in there. Uh, I throw it in the Google Drive folder. So for that one time fee, you get a lifetime access of all the sounds I create. There's guitar stuff and violin stuff in there. By the time you see this video, there will be 12 different sounds in there. We have some other stuff coming up in future videos. Stay tuned for those where I'm just talking about different clean, crunch, high gain settings and then some cool ambient effects uh, with all of the Line 6 Helix stuff. So I hope you found that video helpful in some way. Remember, I have uh, three other videos that I put out recently where I'm sharing other uh, free electric violin presets. We've got one where I talk about making this sound like a really great acoustic violin or viola sound, um, and then doing some different options for playing with overdrive, and then also some cool ambient stuff. So check out the link in the description to those videos if you're interested in that. And again, if you're interested in getting a .hlx download of all this, there's more information in the description for that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.